Bienvenidos, bienvenue, and welcome to the School Meals Coalition Lunch Celebration Event. My name is Ina Moja, and I am very excited to be your host today. Over the course of this program, I'm going to take you all around the world to introduce you to amazing women and men who are working to transform education, health, nutrition system for every children. And they're doing this in part through food, School Meals Program to be specific. In April 2020, more children were receiving school meals than at any time in history. 388 million, or one out of every two school children worldwide. This was a tremendous achievement and the culmination of a decade of action by governments and their partners. Then came COVID-19, stopping one of the most successful social programs in history. Schools closed almost everywhere and almost 370 million school children were without access to the one meal a day many of them could count on. We're now facing the biggest education crisis in history. Now that schools are reopening, millions of children are not returning. This is especially true for girls. If we don't act quickly, an entire generation of children may never recover. That is why world leaders and their partners have created the School Meals Coalition. What you will learn today is that school meals programs are one of the best ways to attract children to and keep them in school. They can improve lives and entire communities. But you don't have to take my word for it. Presidents, ministers, senior UN leaders, farmers, teachers, NGO experts, they will tell you. Let's begin by hearing from world leaders who have personally supported this work and played a key role in founding of School Meals Coalition. We asked them why they supported this coalition, why it's important, and why school meals are a priority for their countries. Et maintenant, c'est mon honneur de vous présenter le président Emmanuel Macron de France et le président Félix Tshisekedi Chilombo de la République démocratique du Congo en tant que représentant de l'Union africaine. Notre objectif est de fournir à tous nos enfants d'ici 2030 les repas dont ils ont besoin pour bien apprendre et bien grandir à l'école. C'est ce que nous sommes en train de faire avec l'ensemble de nos enseignants, des personnels de nos écoles, de nos collèges, de nos lycées. C'est évidemment ce que nous avons fait dans nos restaurants universitaires avec le Crous à 1 euro. C'est ce que nous faisons dans nos écoles avec la cantine à 1 euro. C'est ce que nous faisons avec les petits déjeuners gratuits. C'est un combat essentiel dans nos pays, mais à l'international. très heureux aujourd'hui de vous annoncer le lancement d'une coalition pour l'alimentation scolaire. Cette coalition avec le PAM est essentielle, alors rejoignez-nous.
tous ensemble, unissons nos forces pour l'éducation. Excellences, Mesdames et Messieurs, je suis honoré de participer à cet événement majeur consacré au programme de repas scolaire. Pour l'Afrique, les programmes de repas scolaire constituent à la fois une ambition portée par tous et une priorité absolue. Ceci est attesté notamment par notre position commune présentée lors du sommet des Nations Unies sur les systèmes alimentaires le 23 septembre dernier. En 2016, l'Union africaine avait pris la résolution de soutenir le développement des programmes d'alimentation durable, lesquels contribuent de manière significative à promouvoir une éducation inclusive et de qualité, ainsi que des résultats probants en matière de nutrition, de santé et d'agriculture. Mesdames et Messieurs, parmi les avantages que procurent les programmes de repas scolaires, l'on pourrait citer, entre autres, le développement du capital humain, la construction d'un avenir plus fort pour l'Afrique et le monde, la production agricole, les emplois et marchés locaux, en lien avec nos efforts soutenus pour atteindre les objectifs de développement durable et l'Agenda 2063. Aussi, je voudrais affirmer que la Coalition pour les repas scolaires peut compter sur le soutien sans réserve de l'Union africaine, qui s'engage à travailler avec tous ses États membres et ses partenaires pour intensifier et améliorer les programmes de repas scolaires sur tout le continent. En ce temps marqué par la lutte contre la COVID-19 et ses conséquences dramatiques, particulièrement sur les personnes vulnérables, l'Afrique ne ménagera aucun effort pour garantir l'accès à un repas sain à l'école pour tous les enfants d'ici 2030. Je vous remercie. Merci, Messieurs les Présidents Macron et Tshisekedi Chilombo. Next, would like to introduce you, Mr. Vils Kinari, Minister for Development Cooperation and Foreign Trade of Finland, and Mr. David Beasley, Executive Director of the World Food Programme. Thank you, Inna. Thank you so much. Welcome everyone to our School Meals Coalition Celebration event. The Government of Finland is proud to play a leading role in the School Meals Coalition. School Meals programs do more than provide food. They can transform lives and communities. When done right, they can improve health, nutrition and education and support local agriculture. They can promote gender equality and teach children how to eat better, creating habits that last a lifetime. They play a critical role in get, getting kids, particularly girls, to school and keeping them there. This is particularly important as we recover from COVID pandemic. That is why we wanted to help build the School Meals Coalition. The coalition can bring a real difference in broadening the scope and quality of school meals programs worldwide. Finland stands ready to offer our own know-how and expertise to those countries wishing to improve their school meals programs. Today, we stand alongside dozens of governments and other partners to, to, to say we will not give up until we ensure that every child has the opportunity to receive a healthy, nutritious meal in school. Momentum is on our side. Thank you. I look forward to working with you all. It's a pleasure to join the celebration of the School Meals Coalition. In just a few months, 60 governments and 50 organizations have come together from around the world to support the coalition's ambitious plan to ensure that every single child can access healthy school meals by 2030. The COVID pandemic smashed a decade of progress made in expanding school meals to the world's most vulnerable children. This is our chance to get back on track. School meals programs are unquestionably life-changing. They give the poorest families a powerful incentive to keep their children, especially their daughters, in school. And by sourcing foods from smallholders, 
Uh, they help farmers earn a living and boost local economies all at the same time. At WFP, we're ready to support governments around the world as they scale up and run nationally-led school feeding programs. And we'll help connect these programs to the health and the agricultural sectors for maximum impact. So, to the governments that haven't signed up to the School Meals Coalition, come join us. Let's work together to ensure that every single child in every nation can go to school with the promise of a, a healthy meal and a good education and a hope for a better future. Thank you for your leadership. From the start, the momentum has been amazing. What began as discussions among a handful of colleagues has blossomed into a truly global coalition, representative of countries from North and South, rich and poor. This crisis requires action. The School Meals Coalition is the call to action. The coalition was created in 2020 in the lead up to the UN Food System Summit, where more than 28 leaders from countries all over the world spoke out in support of this coalition. One after another, leader after leader, called for action. Listen for yourself. Next, we will hear from another commitment to action, this time around a very important initiative that has attracted a lot of interest this past year and a half against a backdrop of closed schools and lockdowns. I am delighted to give the floor right now to the School Meals Coalition. Bajo esta visión, el programa de alimentación escolar se convierte en el eje central del desarrollo de los pueblos ya que resuelve de raíz las causas subyacentes del hambre, la pobreza, la violencia y la migración. Se acabó el tiempo de palabras. Es nuestro deber actuar hoy para garantizar acceso permanente a nutrición, salud y educación que necesitan para crecer, educarse y desarrollarse de forma sana y plena, rodeados por su familia en sus propias comunidades. Finland has been actively promoting the establishment of the School Meal Coalition. Argentina ha adherido a la coalición de comedores escolares. Mon pays s'attelle à la mise en œuvre de cantines scolaires en privilégiant leur approvisionnement auprès d'acteurs locaux. The African Union Development Agency, NEPAD, has worked to facilitate an African common position in advance of this summit with the following priority tracks. One, adopt nutrition food policies, establish food reserves, and expand school feeding programs. I am pleased that Kenya is taking leadership in the School Meals Coalition. The Agriculture for School Lunch Project is one of our success stories in addressing food insecurity and malnutrition. So as to deliver safe, healthy, and nutritious school meals. Our support to the School Feeding Coalition. Guatemala se adhirió a la Coalición del Hambre Cero y a la Coalición de Alimentación Escolar. And we therefore support the coalition on school feeding and commit ourselves to achieving the goal. School meals. The school meal. Y es que firmamos la Coalición para la Alimentación Escolar. We are pleased to have joined the School Meals Coalition. My country, Luxembourg, is particularly proud to join the School Meals Coalition. The establishment of effective school meal programs represents a smart investment into future generations as well as into more sustainable humanitarian action and development. We look forward to working with so many of you through the global coalition called School Meals Nutrition, Health and Education for Every Child to ensure that every child has access to nutritious meals in school for, by 2030. La Principauté a annoncé son soutien à la Coalition pour les repas scolaires, nutrition, santé et éducation pour tous les enfants. Coalition sur les cantines scolaires. Schools Meals Coalition. La Coalition des programmes alimentaires scolaires. School Meals. School Meals. La France appuie également la Coalition pour l'alimentation scolaire. We already support the School Meat Coalition. Bénin s'est engagé à jouer un rôle prépondérant au sein de la Coalition mondiale. I'm pleased to see many member states rallying around universal access to nutritious meals in schools. A great example of how social protection can support resilience, food security, and the rights of children and young people. Amazing! 
to hear the importance of school meals highlighted from Iceland to Gambia, from Vietnam to the United States, it's exciting. Today we have over 110 countries and partners who have signed the declaration in support of the School Meals Coalition. Now, let's turn to the heart of this program. When we say that school meals can transform agriculture, what do we mean? How does a school meals program benefit the local farmer? And how does that local farmer benefit the school meals program? To help us understand, we begin with Nancy Aburto, who will explain how school meals program can benefit local agriculture and farmers and support markets. Nancy. School meals, particularly when linked to local agricultural production, can benefit both local food consumption and local agriculture. One example is from Cambodia, where 267 schools in seven provinces enlist the support of 665 farmers for the school meals programs. With additional funds, the school meals programs are also expanding the local procurement approach to another 131 schools. The school meals program will reach at least an estimated 80 suppliers and 400 producers, of which 47%, almost half, are women. And finally, it will reach almost 46,000 pre- and primary age children over the age of three with healthy, nutritious diets. Secondly, when school meals programs are linked to local food production, they can provide structured and predictable markets for smallholder and local producers, reducing smallholders' uncertainty regarding market engagement and reducing risk they face in investing in improved and diversified production. This encourages investments in improved food production quality, leading to improved income, food security, and resilience of local farmers. However, for these benefits to happen, it's strongly recommended that school meals programs are accompanied by programs aiming specifically to support smallholder farmers, production, and facilitating them to sell to schools. Thank you, Nancy. Next, let's hear how one government is committing to ramping up their school meals program to meet this moment in history. In Rwanda, Dr. Gerardine Mukeshimana will tell us more. Following Ms. Immaculé Makorasanga, a local Rwandan farmer, will explain how her contribution to a local school meals program has affected her farm, her community, and her family. The government of Rwanda is committed to sustaining the recent expansion and scale-up of school feeding program across all levels of basic education from 640,000 children in 2020 to 3.3 million children in 2021. This expansion will support national and local markets by sourcing locally produced foods wherever possible. This provides market opportunities to smallholder farmers and local catering businesses, mainly led by women. Mazina ya anje, nituwa mkaru sangi makire, domu nyamurjangu wako hivye jambere muhinsi. Unu kufuga ngu nungu hinga munga mjisoko, kani na chaji kooni, tukarija tukihaza. Nukufuga ngu mbuga urozi ngora, na munga munga na munga mata. Kani na atuke tulaya munga munga wanyeko fitenu mchechu lukuze, unakua akere la njina risa vopirative ya mbele muhinzi, ni mazemo imyaka itanda tu. Narajamo naru muhinzi usanzwe, Uhi tuwa hinga gamu huli jobu kajagari, tutagamiju iso kopi. Munu ya avugati ndari iye ndara muse ni ibiyo. Ariko kuja muri kooperative, huli ya iya banu vichize hamge, bahu zimbaraga. Na wa awundu da fitimbaraga, akazamo chila kuri baba andi wa fitimbaraga. Nukufuwa ngo, ichobu ya mari ya biya mfashije, na watera hunga wa sanga banu wali hamge, na wali kusanga murugo, ngo bamenye ngo jewe nubwo umunzi kubera ko ndi muri jambere muhinzi ibyo nuko uvuga ngo iryo ni isoko kandi dushima ko rihoraho amafaranga kaboneka umuryango ugatekana kubera ko gutanga mitwere bitangirwa igihe ubuzima bukagenda neza no kugira ngo tujye mu bimina nabyo tubikesha amafaranga yagiye ava muri ya musaruro ayo mu bimina nabyo tukayakoramo ubworozi Hiri yanga, aji iva mutimina, bitewe inkunga nuwo musaruru ujyanwa na pamu, 
ye nubwishingize mvugo kufata ntabwo iwihererana wigende kwira kwisa mu biko by'amashuri abana bacu bakarya mu mwana akava kwishuri rwose ubona komeye ameze neza nta kibaso yagize ari wa wundi uciye hasi utaza sasita ngo abone icyarya nawe gasangira nabandi ubwo bakagira iki usangira buzima bakumva ko bose ari bame ibyo rero nibyo kwishimirwa cyane That was truly inspiring and worth repeating. The government of Rwanda has committed to reaching five times more children with school meals, from 640,000 to 3.3 million. Now it is important to note that this work is not simply about replacing what existed pre-pandemic, but doing it better and reaching those we missed. Among other things, better means doing more to link school meals to health and nutrition programs. First, Professor Don Bandi will explain why it's just as important to look after the learner as the learning. He will also tell us about the new research consortium, which is already working to ensure that we are sharing lessons learned and best practices. Welcome, Don. Thanks, Ina. It's a real pleasure to be part of this event. I want to take a minute now to address how quality school meals programs can improve health, nutrition and child development. We hope that when a child reaches school age, the child has already benefited from health systems that support early child health and development. Those first 1,000 days of life are crucial. But keeping a child healthy and well nourished during the next 7,000 days, right through school age and adolescence, is also crucial. And it's crucial because it ensures that the early gains are sustained and also it supports children during key developmental phases especially when we think of puberty of the adolescent growth spurt and of the brain development that occurs during late adolescence well-designed menus in school can help establish lifelong dietary behaviors that avoid obesity and reduce the risk of cardiovascular and other non-communicable diseases later in life we also see that more than 90% of national school meals programs use those programs as a platform for delivering health interventions which further support the development of children. Given the importance of all of this, to help promote the quality of school meals programs, the first initiative developed by the coalition was a new research consortium for school health and nutrition. The consortium is a recognition of the importance of good health and nutrition for school-aged children and adolescents and the opportunity to help them take full advantage of what may be their only opportunity for an education. This is a recognition of the importance of looking after the learner as well as the learning of building human capital. The research consortium is a the secretariat is based in the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine and is part of a global network of academic institutions. This structure was, was developed in order to secure the independence of our research, but also to ensure that we really engage with thought leaders all over the world. Don. Next, we go to Ms. Henrietta Four. UNICEF knows a thing or two about children, nutrition, and health. Then to Brazil, where they are pioneers in linking local farms with school meals programs. Ms. Karin Santos will explain why Brazilian law requires that 30% of the food used for school meals programs must be purchased from local smallholders' farms and the nutritional benefits of doing so. She will be joined by Brazilian nutritionists. Ms. Adriana Rosata Souza. Across the globe, millions of families are struggling to provide their children with nutritious and safe food to support their growth and development. 
The challenges they face are wide-ranging. Parents living in poverty cannot afford quality food. Those living in hard-to-reach communities or areas affected by conflict or climate change may not have access to fresh fruits and vegetables. Many markets are flooded with processed foods that are often high in salt, sugar, and saturated fat, and low in essential nutrients. This failure to provide nutritious food results in stunting and wasting, overweight and obesity, and deficiencies in vitamins and nutrients that are essential for growth, development, and learning. Women, parents, and families everywhere are doing their best to ensure that their children are fed nutritious diets, but they cannot do it alone. This crisis of children's diets calls for a new vision and response. We must build a world where food systems deliver the nutritious and safe foods that children need to grow, develop, and learn to their full potential. The good news is that positive change is possible. We can improve the quality of children's foods and diets through actions that make fruits and vegetables available and affordable. We can deliver good nutrition and a healthier planet for every child in every country. We can make it happen. da alimentação na escola com o uso de alimentos seguros, variados, que respeitem a cultura alimentar e que sejam produzidos em âmbito local, aliados à educação alimentar e nutricional realizada por profissionais nutricionistas, fazem com que os alunos recriem seus hábitos alimentares e influenciem diretamente, positivamente, seus familiares, amigos e parentes. E com isso, a alimentação escolar ganhou alimentos mais saudáveis, porque geralmente são alimentos in natura e minimamente processados, contribuindo assim para que os hábitos alimentares saudáveis sejam de fato efetivados. O sucesso da política da alimentação escolar no Brasil está pautada no fato de que ela é uma política baseada no direito humano à alimentação adequada e saudável e também no acesso universal. Os nossos estudantes né, são impactados em termos de saúde e nutrição, porque os cardápios precisam ser balanceados e estar de acordo com as suas necessidades nutricionais. Lembrando que os cardápios escolares devem ser preparados e elaborados estritamente né, por uma nutricionista responsável técnica do programa, pensando sempre na saúde dos nossos estudantes. We all know the benefits of a nutritious diet. Let's hear from a few chefs who are supporters of the School Meals Coalition and stress the importance of a healthy diet on the ability to learn and thrive. Hi, I'm Arthur Botts Dawson. I'm very proud to support the School Meals Coalition, a group of countries coming together to support nutritious food in school for children. Hi, I'm Kishwa, and I want to talk to you about something that affects our global community. In many parts of the world, children from vulnerable families have trouble enrolling or staying in school regularly due to illness, malnutrition and hunger. One of the most important contributions to recovery governments and the international community can make is establishing school meal programs. These programs work, they change lives and help secure the future of children and communities. Healthy and nutritious school meals for children globally are absolutely essential, both for growth, you know, children need to grow properly, we need their minds to be clear and be able to learn, and we need good brain development. I've seen firsthand chefs cooking food for children in the school feeding program in Ethiopia. And in that kitchen, I went in and said, hey, why don't you put some fresh vegetables or put some fresh fruit on the plate? And they already knew that that's what was needed. So chefs actually should be lent on for their experience with food when feeding through the school feeding program because chefs inherently understand the properties of food, healthy, 
well-balanced and nutritious food is vital for children to be able to grow and learn. And it's the chefs that are cooking that food. The chefs play a vital role. We need to listen to them more. That's why I'm proud to support the school meal creation to ensure that every child has the opportunity to grow, run and lead. Why I'm speaking out in support of the School Meals Coalition because every child has the right to grow, learn and thrive. It was great to hear from Kishwar, Tony and Arthur. We only hope that more chefs will be inspired to become involved in the coalition and transform local school meals. Next, we turn to education. We're facing an unprecedented crisis due to COVID-19. I do not think that anyone has trouble understanding the connection between nutritious food and quality education. Yet too many school children around the world still like both, especially now. In this segment, we will hear from some of the world's leading experts and advocates for improving education systems and the role school meals programs can play. To begin with, and for a global context, we will hear from Lisbeth Steer and Dr. Tariq al -Ghork. If we are to be the first generation in history to end extreme poverty and equip every child and young person with the education and skills they need, we must deliver on one of the most important safety nets for children, healthy meals every day in school. The evidence speaks for itself. Effective school health and nutrition programs are essential to the health of our children. Healthy children do not only participate more in school, but they also learn more. In low and middle income countries, every dollar invested in school feeding yields $9 back in social returns as healthy and educated children become more productive adults. In January 2020, before the pandemic hit, school health and nutrition programs had created the most extensive safety net in the world. One in two of the world's children received a meal at school, and the number of children fed in Africa had grown by over 70% in the past decade. These were nearly all nationally owned programs with more than 90% of the costs paid for by countries themselves. But by April 2020, this decade of growth was brought to a dramatic halt by the closure of the world's schools due to COVID-19. More than 1.5 billion children were immediately separated from education. Some 370 million of them were suddenly deprived of their only reliable meal of the day. This has been the worst shock to education systems and vulnerable children in history. As countries build back their education systems, it must include health and nutrition support. The Global Education Commission and the Global Education Forum, a platform of all bilateral and multilateral donors in education, are strongly committed to play a leadership role in the financing work of the School Meals Coalition. We support the coalition's two bold objectives to restore access to school meals for 370 million children by 2022, and to provide new support for 73 million additional children who are the most vulnerable. To make this happen, we must mobilize the necessary finance. The Global Education Commission and the Global Education Forum are supporting the coalition to establish a financing task force. The Financing Task Force will rethink the funding mechanisms that can help countries expand, accelerate and broaden their school health and nutrition programs. There is an estimated $5.7 billion gap in the financing for school health and nutrition programs in low income countries alone. This finance cannot be mobilized in conventional ways. We must enhance the effectiveness of the existing investments find innovative solutions by involving other partners and put in place transitional mechanisms to help countries become self-reliant. Together with the Commission's Chair and UN Special Envoy for Global Education, Gordon Brown, I want to applaud all the efforts in school health and nutrition to advance the dream we share that instead of developing only some of the potential in some children in some countries, we nurture and feed the potential of all children in all countries. Thank you. A 
a holistic approach to education is one of the most critical enablers of children's long-term development. Uh, and guided by this belief, we have placed the highest importance on uh, school health and nutrition as one of the foundational pillars to achieve sustainable development goal four. Um, school health and nutrition is in fact uh, very close to my heart and over the last 10 years, Dubai Kids has invested heavily in a variety of uh, programs focused on this aspect, including school feeding. We signed the declaration of support uh, for the School Meals Coalition and worked with the World Food Program on a $4 million uh, grant uh, focused on building the technical and human capacity of the African Union School Feeding Cluster. We look forward to your support and participation. Let's go now to Kenya and learn more about why the government is prioritizing school meals from Professor George Magoa. Then one of my favorite interviews with Danielle Naganga. Danielle gives us a unique perspective as someone who experienced school meals firsthand as a child growing up in Kenya. Finally, we hear from what we can only hope is our future. Just named UN in Kenya, person of the year 2021 and a rising star in the food and nutrition world. Ms. Wawira Njiro. Take a listen. Distinguished members of Schools Meals Coalition. Kenya offers a mixed modality in kind and cash transfer of school meals intervention that cover 1.6 million primary school children across 4,000 schools. This is considered to be the largest locally procured and fully government financed program of its kind in Africa. The main goal of the school meals program is to support the government's effort towards the attainment of universal primary education, sustainable goal, and education for all. The government has prioritized school meals since 1980 as one of the strategies to promote access to education. The meals not only help to increase enrollment, but also enhance attendance, retention, and transition to high grades, improve gender parity, and act as social safety net for children from food insecure households. The meals provided at school help children to concentrate in class and thus help improve their educational performance. The government is committed to continue providing school meals to all primary school learners in the country. We are working to capacity to build communities to better implement this program. His Excellency the President is keen to ensure that Kenya becomes a strong member of the School Meals Coalition through the School Meals Coalition, we shall explore opportunities to continue sharing our experiences with other countries and continue to seek our support. I am indeed a beneficiary of a School Meals program. I started school when I was six years old and the school was about three kilometers one way from our house. From class one to three, we would leave home at 1 p.m. and then have to walk back in the evening. When I reached class four, this then changed and we would leave school at 4.30 p.m. This is when I started feeling really hungry and hated the very idea of going to school. I'm the firstborn in a family of nine children and basically we went to school on an empty stomach. Our parents could not afford to make breakfast for us. A few times, I tried to run back home for lunch and try to be back at 2 p.m. Otherwise, I would be in trouble with the teachers. On a few occasions, I got some food at home, but by the time I got back to school, I was not only tired, but feeling even more hungry. Luckily, the parents came together, and for a while, we could access a full meal at school. This, however, ran into problems but again, luck was on our side. The government of Kenya came up with a feeding program, what is now called the Nyayo Universal School Milk Program. After this program was introduced, I loved school much more since I looked forward to that packet of milk that I was getting for lunch. And I had extra energy in the afternoon to focus on sports, focus on classwork and walk home in the evening. That one packet of milk served at the right time, transformed my view of school and meant that I no longer associated school with hunger and loss of homework, but in addition, as a place where my hunger 
will be taken care of at the same time learn. I am not sure what would have happened to me if this program was not introduced. Maybe I could have survived, but I fear I may have dropped out of school before I finished. But again, the other thing is that maybe I couldn't have performed as better as I thought. Thank you. The math is simple. A hungry child equals no education. A child is not able to learn if they do not have adequate food. Imagine yourself in a classroom trying to do math on an empty stomach. It's impossible. And what we've seen is by providing kids healthy meals, meals that enable them to stay in school, they're able to concentrate, they're able to do well in exams with data showing that there's improvement in performance of around 10 to 20 percent. And also we see increasing enrollment in the schools where schools will average an increased enrollment of around 20 to 30 percent in the first year of a stable and nutritious school feeding program. Governments should prioritize school meal programs because um, you know, that's the key to developing economies by working with smallholder farmers, giving them a market. It develops the agricultural scene, but also it ensures that children are able to stay in school and get better education outcomes, be able to develop something of themselves. And so when children are not getting the right meals in schools, it puts the economies of countries in jeopardy because it means that these children may not be able to grow up, actually cannot be able to grow up, to have the right tools to be able to develop themselves and their countries. And so school feeding programs are not an expenditure, but an investment in countries' futures. There was a lot to digest from that segment. Wawira's point about school meals program helping to develop human capital, the citizens of the future, really struck me. In this last segment, we will learn about the value of partnerships in driving change globally. We'll first learn more about how the German and the U.S. governments are pursuing partnerships and collaborations with Ms. Julia Klockner, telling us about an initiative to foster collaboration between governments, and Mr. Tom Vilsack, telling us how the U.S. government approaches partnerships globally. Finally, Arlene Mitchell, a longtime supporter of School Meals, will share how the Global Child Nutrition Foundation has been fostering collaboration between countries for more than 20 years and will continue to do so, now through the coalition. In 2019 haben wir deshalb angekündigt, ein globales Aktionsnetzwerk zur Förderung der gesunden, nachhaltigen Schulernährung aufzubauen. Für Expertinnen und Experten aus nationalen Regierungen. Wir freuen uns sehr, dass wir diese Initiative nun in die neue Koalition für Schulernährung integrieren können. Damit wollen wir ein Ländernetzwerk aufbauen und einen Erfahrungsaustausch etablieren. Denn die genannten Ziele lassen sich am besten erreichen, wenn wir unsere Aktivitäten auf internationaler Ebene bünden. Die Koalition für ihre Schulernährung ist dafür ein besonders geeignetes Instrument. Denn an ihr werden Akteure aus internationalen Organisationen, nationalen Regierungen, der Forschung und der Zivilgesellschaft mitwirken. Sehr geehrte Damen und Herren, ich bin sehr stolz, dass wir, Deutschland, in dieser Initiative mitwirken werden. I'm USDA Secretary Tom Vilsack. The United States recognizes that expanding school feeding programs worldwide is critical to reducing hunger, improving child nutrition, promoting gender equity, strengthening human capital, and enabling nations to recover from the COVID-19 pandemic, all the while building towards the UN's 2030 Sustainable Development Goals. We especially thank Finland, Iceland, and France for their leadership in forming this coalition. Now on the international front, through USDA's McGovern Dole International Food for Education and Child Nutrition Program, the United States is the largest international school feeding donor with a 2021 appropriation of 230 million US dollars. McGovern Dole has reached more than 31 million direct beneficiaries, including some of the world's most vulnerable school children, 
in 51 countries through impressive implementing partners such as the World Food Program. A significant portion of this aid is procured locally. As with our national school lunch program, during the pandemic, school meals programs supported by McGovern Dole pivoted to take home rations for children and their families after schools closed during COVID-19. In addition, school meals programs filled a critical gap in global nutrition. While most global child nutrition efforts focused on the first 1,000 days of life, school meals programs and related interventions promote improved nutrition during the next 7,000 days of life, middle childhood and adolescence, supporting not just the physical development, but also higher level cognitive, emotional and social skills development as older children continue to grow. Demonstrating the U.S. commitment to accelerating progress toward global food security and nutrition goals, at the recent UN Food Systems Summit, the U.S. announced a multi-year investment of more than $10 billion to promote food systems transformation and to expand anti-hunger initiatives. This investment is a clear signal that the United States will continue to prioritize improved nutrition outcomes for children at home and abroad. We want to thank the coalition for facilitating this important launch celebration and we encourage widespread participation in this coalition. And we remain committed to supporting the coalition's laudable goals. Thank you all. It's an honor to be with you to talk about partnerships and collaboration. School meal programs support education, health and nutrition, agriculture, and economic development. And partnerships and collaboration are basically the oxygen that sustains the programs. Without that collaborative oxygen between sectors, entities, and people at all levels, the programs and the children they serve cannot thrive. Partnerships with farmers, parents, and schools are essential at the local level, as are partnerships between ministries, businesses, and other stakeholders at the national level. At the global level, collaboration is needed between governments, donors, implementing partners, research and academic institutions, the private sector, and civil society organizations. The Global Child Nutrition Foundation, or GCNF, has encouraged partnerships and monitored the progress of school feeding since 1997. That is when GCNF began to offer an annual forum for government leaders of school meal programs and their partners and stakeholders. The annual forums have strengthened peer-to-peer -peer teaching and learning. They have helped to forge new and productive technical and financial relationships to monitor and report progress over time and to inspire all who participate. The 2019 GCNF Global Survey of School Meal Programs provided evidence that prior to the COVID pandemic, government commitments were very strong partnerships were working, and school meal programs were improving and growing. The School Meals Coalition brings a much needed and timely boost as we're all working to recover from the pandemic. We're excited to work with coalition members to share and build on our experience and to expand collaboration and partnerships in support of children around the world. Thank you. As you have heard today, School meals programs are more than a plate of food. They have the potential to transform agriculture, nutrition and education systems, and in doing so, transform lives. But we can't realize this potential without urgent action now and new ways of working. Let's welcome Carmen Borbano, the Director of School Feeding at the World Food Program, an integral individual in building the new School Meals Coalition. Thank you, Ina. As someone that has worked in school meals programs for a very long time and has seen firsthand the impact that these programs can have on children's education, on their nutrition, their health, but also their well-being of their entire communities, it is very exciting to see this initiative, the coalition, taking off this year. About 60 countries have come together in the belief that these programs are fundamental to take us out of the COVID-19 crisis. We need to work together to restore access to these programs and what existed before the pandemic. But it is also really important to reach to the children that were being left behind even before 2020 and across the board, improve the quality of the programs in almost every country in the world. 
The diversity of the partners you have seen in the program today is only the tip of the iceberg of what is needed to bring about this transformational change. From national governments to local governments, from organizations, civil society, think tanks, academia, and others are really needed to make this happen, and the coalition is here precisely for that purpose. I am now asking you to join us to ensure that every child has the opportunity to get a healthy meal in school by 2030. If you are a government that's not yet on board, please sign our declaration of commitment. If you are an organization and you're interested in joining, please sign the declaration of support. And if you're an individual, please help us spread the word and tell your government to join. You can also join many of the initiatives that are getting off the ground that are specifically designed to tackle some of the bottlenecks and challenges that governments are facing, like more and better evidence to make decisions through the research consortium or more sustainable financing for these national domestic programs. I am really excited to see what we can do together. Thank you. We have heard from big governments and small global organizations heads of state, internationally respected experts. Yet, we can't finish this program today without one more perspective. I want to say that I think this is a really exciting time for the evolution of meaningful policies around the better health and nutrition of children in schools. Quite simply, it's an issue that's been left behind for too long and you're all going to bring it right up to the front. And I think that's an issue that really needs to be put into the uppermost part of decision makers in trays super fast. The schools have been closed. We miss our friends, our teachers, and the food we get every day. Les repas scolaires aident les enfants à aller à l'école, rendent l'apprentissage facile et amusant. I even know where the food is coming from. It grows on the school garden and in the fields of the neighborhood. Can you concentrate when you're hungry? Me neither. Nous voulons un monde où chaque enfant a la chance d'aller à l'école, d'apprendre, de jouer, de se faire des amis et grandir en santé. Kaya tinatawagan po namin ang ating leaders na magkaroon ng school meals sa lahat ng schools para lahat ng bata ay makabalik sa school. Join us in this school. Join us in this school. Join us in this call. Join us in this school. Join us in this school. Join the School Meals Coalition. There you have it, a truly amazing array of international experts, government leaders and people on the ground doing the work in schools and on local farms are all saying the same thing. We need a focus on restoring and improving school meals programs. We need governments to take this momentum and run with it. We need more to commit to actions at the country level where the real work happens. Let's get to it. Join us, sign the declaration, make your commitment now, and help the School Meals Coalition ensure that every child has a healthy, nutritious meal every day. Thank you for joining us today. Good day and good night. Bonne journée et bonne nuit.